Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I have for you a tag video. This one is called the Life Goals Tag and I was tagged by the beautiful Denny. Her channel is called Gons Girl and I will link all her information below so that you can go check her out. She has a really awesome channel. Anyways, I was really excited to hear her answers about these questions. She actually made up this tag herself and I just really like the thought behind all of these because I think we all know each other in the way that we have a kindred spirit when it comes to makeup, but I venture to say we probably have a lot of other things in common too if we knew each other better. So I'm going to go through, there's 10 questions and answer each one for you, and then at the end I will tag some people. Seems like we kind of all run in the same circle these days, but um, yeah, it'll be fun to tag some people. And just in case... I don't say your name. I still want you to do it if you're interested in doing it. All right. Number one, name three goals that you set for your life. Wow. I'm actually a person who sets goals all the time. I set little goals and I set like short-term goals and then I set long-term goals. Um, I'll just kind of talk about the ones that I'm concentrating on right now. Um, number one, get to retirement with teaching. Um, number two, get down to a reasonable weight where I have physical freedom that I want and need. And number three, continue to grow my YouTube channel. My goal right now, my short-term goal is 500 subscribers or 10,000 views. Um, after that, I'll set another one, but that's kind of how I do life. I, st I set a goal, I reach it, I set another one. Um, and I just like to do it that way because it makes me feel like I'm moving forward and I'm not stagnant and getting stuck in one spot. Number two, are you passionate about any particular thing? <sighs> I'm passionate about a lot of things. You guys know I'm passionate about makeup, so I think that's an aside there. But um, I'm very passionate about serving Jesus. I'm very passionate about children. I'm very passionate about um, empowering young women who <sighs> are probably as confused as I was at that age. And I... I'm passionate about being a voice to them that I needed to hear at that age. Um, you know, I had major self-esteem issues. I, I dealt with a lot of shame. I was really embarrassed and not comfortable in my own skin. And I feel like I wasted a lot of life and missed out on a lot of joy because I was so bound up in that way of thinking. And I would love to be able to keep somebody else or help somebody else um, not have to go through that. Um, there are some very, you know, tiny details that once I own those things and learn those things about who I am, um, everything changed for me. And so I would like to share those things with, you know, teenage girls. Um, number three, do you have any hobbies? And if so, do they tie into your goals? Um, yeah, I really like computers and you know, video, video editing, photography, all those kind of things. Um, so those do tie into my goals. Um, I, <laughs> I love to read. So obviously that ties into my goal of being a teacher. Um, I love to write poetry, short stories. Um, I have never written a novel except for those of you that know what NaNoWriMo is, which is national, um, Novel Writing Month, where you endeavor to write 50,000 words. I did that once and felt like that was a major accomplishment. Um, don't know when I would ever have the time to do that again, maybe after I retire from teaching. But that was a really awesome exercise. It started out as a work of fiction and ended up being a memoir. And it was actually a painful process, but also a very healing process. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any other hobbies. I, you know... I have so much time that's tied up into obligations that I don't have a lot of time for hobbies. I do like to craft and I do like to do scrapbooking and those kind of things, but I honestly do not have time for it, for it at all. At all. <laughs> so maybe someday I'll have room for more hobbies, but for now, this is about it. Taking care of this channel. Number four, as a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? 
Um, the really ironic thing about this, and I don't know why I've been overly emotional today, so hopefully I can get this out without being emotional, but the very first thing I remember wanting to be was a mom. Um, when I was a little bitty girl, when we still lived in Arizona, um, I that was when Baby Alive first came out, and we're talking the peeing, pooping Baby Alive, the one that's mouth moved and ate real food, and I was all about that, but I literally remember... Um, like praying at nighttime when I said my prayers that God would bring me a baby and that when I woke up in the morning I would go out on the porch and there would be a bassinet with a baby in it and I believed he would give it to me so every day I don't know if my mom ever knew this I'll have to ask her but every day I would run to the front door throw the screen door open to see if there was a baby there and so like from the very beginning I wanted to be a mom and unfortunately the way that my life and health turned out I wasn't able to be a biological mom um, that used to be devastating to me devastating to me um, but I finally got over it I guess I finally accepted it and moved on from it um, and somebody said something to me once that helped me get over that and she just said you know what Sherry you get to be a spiritual mom to lots of children and Perhaps God didn't give you biological children because um, he knew that after being a spiritual mom to so many, you wouldn't have the time or energy to, to do more than that. And, you know, that's all well and good. Yes, I'm still um, sad that I didn't get to be a bi biological mom, but I do have two stepchildren that are my children. Um, they are my children. I say stepchildren because I wanted to make sense. I just said I didn't have biological children so who are these children my children um when i married their dad i married them and whenever um their dad unmarried me um i didn't unmarry them and so i i did get to be a mom and i am a grandma and so i got a lot of the things that go along with motherhood um but I didn't get to experience pregnancy or giving birth or, you know, what it feels like to have a biological child. And, you know, I still wish that I could have. Um, I'm not devastated over it anymore, but I still wish that I could have. Uh, so I wanted to be a mom. I never really thought about a career. And maybe it was because my mom stayed at home with us. And that's, you know, what I saw in regard to a female career. But... Um, I've always been, you know, a nurturing, taking care of people type of person. And so naturally that is part of motherhood and part that I think I would be really good at. Number five is when was your first encounter with makeup? Um, you know, I remember Avon ladies and this is as far back as Arizona. We moved to Oklahoma whenever I was turning six, the summer I was turning six in 1978 and um, I remember those little bitty baby makeup samples, the little lipstick samples, and my mom would let me have them. And I thought they were the greatest things ever. The only one I remember in particular is a pearly pink one. And I think she probably let me have that one because it didn't show up like distinctly. I could put it on all day long and maybe put it on my entire face and you couldn't still see it, but I was all about it. Um, Whenever I got into to elementary school and all that, I was a tomboy. I was playing sports. I didn't care about the makeup. But once I got into middle school, um, became a Dran Dran fan, and I didn't want them to be wearing more makeup than me. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. But um, that's when I got into makeup. And that was kind of, you know, the 80s style was so eclectic, and I was all into that. And bright pink, and I have some really uh, scary black male status pictures of myself with hot pink eyeshadow up to here and see that's before I you know got rid of the unibrow and I didn't really have like an authentic unibrow but my eyebrows were like Brooke Shields eyebrows but I thought that was the end of the world it made me look like a boy um, but yeah eyebrows that came down to here and into here and yeah it wasn't cute but my very first time of actually putting makeup on besides the thing with the the lipsticks um, I think it was probably like lime green and I didn't know what I was doing obviously and my dad hurt my feelings big time <laughs> because he looked we were going to a, one of my brother's ball games and he probably looked at me and thought she looks hideous 
And so he wasn't going to look at me and say, you look hideous. He, he said to me, um, I think you look beautiful naturally. I think you look great without all that stuff on your face. Of course, instead of taking that as a compliment, my feelings were crushed. But um, those are the ones that I remember in particular. Number six, if you could collab with any brand, who would they be? Um, I actually, when I heard Denny um, answering this, I had to sit there and think about who I would collab with. Um, that's a really hard one because there are products from almost every brand that I really love. Back in the day, I probably would have said Too Faced because my early days of really being obsessed with makeup was all about Too Faced. You know, the chocolate bar palette was my very first one. Um, you know, I was just, I loved everything that I got from them. I wasn't ever disappointed. Um, of late, I have been disappointed with some of their products. Um, gosh, let's just play the Jeopardy theme for a minute and let me think about it. Okay, I'm going to have to say two different ones. Number one... Um, Kat Von D, because I just love the artistry behind behind it. I love that, um, you know, there's a vision, and she turns that into something. And I think if I were to come up with a makeup line or collab with a makeup brand, I think it would be all about the artistry for me. It wouldn't just be about makeup. It would be about, like, the whole theme and the concept behind it and, and how it came to fruition and all that. Um Number two would be ColourPop. And the reason ColourPop is because I just, I love how innovative they are. I love that, you know, they keep coming out with all this new stuff and they're pumping it out. And some of it's great and some of it's not, but they throw it out there and give it a try. Um, it's not always safe. <laughs> and, and I'm kind of about that when it comes to things creatively. I don't think that you can always be safe. You're going to have your, you know, Anastasia subculture palette from time to time, but get over it, move on. And, um, you know, ColourPop has some great things. They have some not so great things, but they keep on trying and keep on innovating, you know, keep on innovating and coming back out with new things that no one ever has ever <laughs> brought out before. Think, I mean, think about the super shock shadows. Who would have ever thought a texture like that, you know, ever. So I really, I really dig their style. Um, you know, I, whenever they first started, uh, collabing with YouTubers, I was really excited about that because it's like they are considering YouTubers as legit and they were one of the first companies to do that. I think a, a lot of companies jumped on the bandwagon after that. I think they led the way. I like people who lead the way. I like, you know, the pioneers. <laughs> Um, number seven, if you had your own brand, what would it be? What would it be of? Um, if I had my own brand, there'd be no way it could just be one thing. It would have to be an entire line. Um, I think I would absolutely begin with eyeshadow because that's my number one favorite thing or just eye makeup in general. And secondly, I would start with, or secondly, I would, um, do lipstick. Those are my two things that I love the most. Um, but I don't know, like I haven't even allowed myself to dream in that regard. Um, because I just, not that I'm limiting myself, but I just don't, I don't know if that's something that I would want to do. I don't know if I would ever have the money to invest in something like that. Um, you know, I'm not going to say never, I'm going to ride this train as far as it goes. Um, because I love it and it's my passion. Um, if number eight, if you, if your career took off, like if you became famous, who would you take with you? Oh my goodness. I used to say this all the time and I mean it. Not that I have ever had the opportunity to go anywhere and be famous, but I always, you know, I would never abandon the people who were with me whenever I was at my worst or at my least, um, they would be the ones that would be by my side at my best and at the furthest as far as far as success is concerned. You know, my parents, my husband, my best friends, um, people that I consider sisters of the heart. You know, anybody who is significant in my life right now, um, my family, especially my family. 
But, you know, I consider people that are my closest friends to be my family. Um, and, and Boo Bear, Boo Bear would have to go. And Eli. <laughs> but, yeah, you know, I'm a down-to-earth person. And if really good opportunities came my way and somehow I got some kind of publicity and I can't imagine myself being in the public eye in that way. Um, but I think if you are, I think you have to have a circle, a tight circle, a small circle of people that you can trust. Um, and that's my family and my closest friends. Number nine, where is your ideal place to live? <sighs> you know, that's, that's a difficult question to answer because I have different reasons for different places. Um, my first teaching job was in Colorado. Um, my first three years of teaching from 2003 to 2005. And I really, really loved Colorado. And I think I would love to live in Colorado. Um, I left Colorado because I needed to be home where my mom was because she was going through breast cancer. And I also needed to get away from a very um, unhealthy relationship. And it seemed that getting leaving Colorado was the only way I was going to get away from it. And so I packed up and came home. I think if it hadn't been for that relationship, I would probably still be living in Colorado because I really did love it. Um, so that's that's one one place I would like to live. Ideally, I would like to live in a dry climate because physically, humidity and dew point and different things really affect me. Physically, as far as the fibro is concerned, and um, dramatic temperature hikes and drops. Um, Oklahoma weather is fully unpredictable, as is all weather. But in Oklahoma, it can be 18 degrees one day and literally 90 degrees the next. And we don't even think that's weird anymore because it happens that way. And since I'm particularly sensitive to that, being somewhere that had more of a steady temperature would lend much better to my issues with the fibro. So, you know, where is it beautiful year round? California and Florida. I don't think I would ever live in California. No offense to Californians. I just, it's just not my cup of tea. Um, I've been there lots of times and I enjoyed my time there, but I was really ready to leave. And I'm talking traffic and expense and all the things that go with California. Um, but I really, don't know much about Florida either. And truth is, I'm probably going to stay planted right here in Podunksville, Oklahoma. <laughs> Number 10. Have you attempted to reach these goals in the past? And if so, how many times? Um, like I said, I think the goals in my life has, have been a progression, all kind of building upon the other. Um, as far as my weight is concerned, in my last video, I talked about that a lot, um, you know, hundreds of times, a billion different ways, and, um, you know, didn't work out for me. But, you know what, I am a very strong believer in things do happen for a reason, even if I don't understand them now. I do know that God is working out everything for my good. I'm called according to his purpose. He is working all things for my good. I know this. And so even if I don't understand, even if it doesn't make sense for me right now, I do know that someday I will understand. Even if it's not this side of heaven, someday I will understand. And I have to trust that what he has for me is what, what I need to have. And what he doesn't have for me is something that I don't need. And, you know, as long as I have him... I have everything that I need. He's sufficient. And so from there, you know, the, the successes and the joys, you know, I'm so thankful and grateful for those. Um, the disappointments and the heartaches, I'm, I hope that I will embrace the lesson that is learned from them. Um, you know, I really don't regret many things. There, I do have regrets, but I don't regret the strength the resiliency, you know, the ability to get my butt up every time I get knocked down, you know, the, the perseverance and all the things that I've gained from the adversity in my life. And so I can't be mad at it. It may not have been fun and yeah, it was hard getting through it, but I wouldn't want to give back what I gained from it either. So, 
um, even with my weight. You know, right now I feel like I'm on an upward trajectory. I feel like I've found something that's going to work and help and and move me forward. And I'm going to keep. I'm going to ride that train as far as it goes. Um, and if that should end tomorrow, then I'm going to keep on looking for the answer. And that's kind of how I feel about everything. I'm a researcher. I'm a learner. I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> or somebody that I love hopefully can help me figure it out. But in the meantime, I would try to find joy in every day. I try to be grateful for everything that I have. And just, you know, never take for granted the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God, the people that he's placed in my life and my family and all the wonderful things that I'm blessed with. I can't um, be mad at it. I keep saying that, but I can't be mad at it. So um, she hashtagged this life goals tag and empowerment challenge. And so I think thinking about these things really, you know, it's just a really good exercise for anybody to actually think about these things. Sometimes you kind of get stuck in the mundane of life and you just keep going and you just keep going and you don't really think about where you're going to end up or um, how things are going to end up or how you're even going to get to where you want to go. But I, I said in my last video, I, I'm just done waiting around for, um, you know, something to happen to me <laughs> in life. It's like if I want something out of whatever thing, weight loss or my YouTube channel or my career or whatever it is, if I want to succeed, if I want to grow in those areas, growth is never stagnant. Growth is get up and do it. Um, get up and do it and sometimes, you know, it will follow. If you just sit around and wait for it to be handed to you, chances are it's not going to be. So um, I'm all about empowerment of women. I'm all about, you know, girl power. I'm all about um, we can do anything, you know. There's just such strength. I think the strength of a woman is her heart and there's nothing that's more powerful than the love of a woman. Um, in this life, if you get a good woman, you're a lucky person. And if you get a good man, you're a lucky person too. If you get a good person to love you, you're a lucky person. And so anyways, I can go on and on. I'll save this for my February heart to heart. <laughs> but again, thank you, Denny, for inviting me and tagging me to do this because I really enjoyed it. And like I said, I think it's a really good exercise for us to do just to kind of put words and, and actual thoughts into to what we do and why we do what we do and all those things. And just to remember that, you know, we bad. <laughs> we got this. We can do this. Whatever we put our minds to, you know. And it's really cool that we all have each other's backs in regard to this YouTube thing. I think it's great. So thank you so much for watching and thank you for listening to my long-windedness. Hey, this is 24 minutes. That is a record for me to answer questions like this in less than a half an hour. Give me my props. <laughs> all right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And um, it is tag time. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so Denny tagged almost everybody that I would have ordinarily tagged, except I do want to tag Sabrina the Makeup Mom, my friend Shannon Caramanes. Did I say it right? Caramanes. Shannon Caramanes. If I didn't say it right, I really tried. Um, Amy Ecker. And I've got some new subscribers that I would like to get to know better. Um, and so I'm going to do the little thing I did last time and just put the names up at the end. And I'll also put... You stole my heart of gold After my silver soul Can you dig in? So
Don't be-